Hey guys, good morning. So today I'm working on the P48, which is our uh, 1948 Chevy 3100. And uh, what I'm working on today is uh, trimming out the front cross member for clearance uh, for our rack and pinion unit. Uh, the Helix IFS uh, Mustang 2 front suspension that we installed here in the uh, P48 um, uses a rack and pinion. We went ahead and got the power rack and pinion for it. Uh, small price difference, so I thought the power would be nice. Uh, and since our uh, TBI 350 already has a power steering pump, might as well, uh, might as well go with the power steering. Uh, so what I've got to do today is uh, clearance the front cross member uh, for the rack and pinion to fit in front of uh, our IFS cross member. So since we've already added uh, a new cross member um, under the motor uh, that mounts all of our suspension components uh, on the Mustang 2 IFS, uh, the stock front cross member, which is pretty massive, it's a pretty wide uh, front cross member there between the frame rails, um, that one uh, can be trimmed back. We're not going to lose any strength by trimming it uh, because we've already added a new cross member just about a foot or two behind it. So uh, what I'm going to do is notch out the back section of that cross member. Um, today I am just going to rough cut it uh, so that I can get the IFS um, test fit into place and tack the mounts onto our IFS cross member or uh, the rack and pinion unit tacked into place onto our IFS cross member. Um, and then when we pull the motor out uh, to paint it, which will happen here once we get everything together, the truck running and driving, uh, then comes all the finish work and making it all look pretty and uh, cleaning things up. So at that time, I'll, uh, I'll trim the cut areas a little more cleanly and uh, clean up that whole inside section of frame rail once I get the motor out. It'll just be easier to work with at that point. So today I'm just rough cutting it. So I'm going to use uh, my DeWalt angle grinders, of course, and uh, cutoff wheel, and notch both sides of the of the cross member between the frame rails, and uh, run across there and take. I'm um, probably taking eight inches off of the back of the cross member. Once the cross member is trimmed enough, then I can uh, clean up the areas I need to clean up with the flap disc, uh, clean up the mounting tabs, and tack the uh, rack and pinion into place and connect the tie rod ends off the end of the rack and pinion to our steering arms on our knuckles uh, which will then give us steering so we'll actually be able to uh, to steer the P48. Um, at that point we'll be ready to uh, get a double D shaft uh, which is what the uh, steering shafts are, are called uh, because they look like a D. Um, we'll get the uh, D shaft and the, the universal joints uh, to fit up and connect our steering column uh, to our rack and pinion. So that's going to take a little bit of work and um, I think I'm going to have to use three U joints to do that because of the angles involved to get around our uh, motor mount on the driver's side. Uh, we've also got to install steering column bearings. Um, there is one bearing currently on our steering column uh, up at the steering wheel flange. There's a, there's a bearing and we need to get the same size bearing uh, for the bottom end of the steering column so that we support that shaft top and bottom because the shaft was cut off of our original steering box which uh, located the bottom part of the steering shaft. So I'm going to order up two new bearings for the steering shaft and get those pressed into the column and then everything will be good to go as far as the steering goes. Uh, I've also got to weld up our pinch clamp for the bottom part of the steering column that locates it into the firewall and keeps the column from moving up and down. I've, I've cut the tubing for that. I just need to uh, do a little trimming and fitting and uh, weld a couple bolts to that. A um, couple pieces of tubing with a bolt nut that will pinch the, pinch the clamp around the steering column and hold it in place. So I'm going to set you guys up so you can watch me throw sparks over here and uh, I'm going to get to work. So this is the area that I'm going to trim out. The original motor mount for the 213 bolted here and mounted to the front part of the uh, of the engine itself on our 213 straight six. And uh, we really don't need this section of cross member. Uh, it's quite beefy. Uh, it has a has a tubular cross section here and another one here. 
and we're going to trim out this rear section. So I'm just going to come across with the angle grinder, uh, notch this out here, come straight across the valley, and the same on the opposite side for now. And then at some point later on when I can get into this frame better, I will remove, uh, I've got to grind out the rivets uh, that hold this little section into place here and remove this and then finish plating the inside of the frame to here. Uh, so everything will have a nice finished look to it. I managed to get away with that one for a lot of years, but I think it's time to uh, time to invest in another, another plasma cutter because that was a horrible task. Okay, guys, so I rough cut uh, the back edge of our uh, front cross member, uh, and now I've just got to clean up our rack and pinion mounts. These are angled blocks that weld into the IFS cross member for the Mustang II conversion, and uh, there's one of them slotted, the passenger side is slotted to allow for either a manual manual rack and pinion or the power rack which we're putting in here. Power rack also uses a, a three quarter inch spacer on these uh, brackets to space the rack and pinion out. And longer bolts, the, the bolts are slightly longer to accommodate the spacer on the power rack. <clears throat> so I've got to clean these up, get them more ready for welding and uh, clean up the cross member as well and then I can uh, tack these into position they're 15 and a half inches spread on the uh, rack and pinion bolt holes and the rack is biased off to the passenger side just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and get under there clean everything up mark my centers uh, and tack these things in so when the rack comes it, it's not centered so you have to uh, determine the center of the rack and pinion and the only way to do that is to rotate it fully one direction uh, rotate it back all the way the other direction and count the number of revolutions and then you divide that in half and that's your center point so then you turn it back that center to that center point and that gives you your centered rack and pinion width so then I can take that measure the the frame and center it on the frame center uh, so that you have an even amount of travel for your steering arms, um, for your tie rods to reach your uh, steering arms on your knuckles. Uh, if you have it off center a little bit, you might have a binding issue when the when the independent front suspension on one side travels up. Uh, you know you might not have enough room for the tie rod to travel up. It might hit the frame and bend. Um, so you want to make sure that's centered under your frame rails uh, at the at the universal joint here so that it has plenty of travel. So if you have to do it this way and you have to use a vice grip uh, because you don't have uh, a universal joint to slip onto these splines, don't clamp down on it. You don't really need to crank down on those splines and dent them or scar them up to where your universal joint won't slip on. I've got this as loose as I can and still have, a, have enough grip on the shaft to turn it okay so right there is my full left bump stop on the steering so now I'm going to rotate it all the way to the right and count the number of revolutions that's one two and a half Okay, that's three revolutions. So now I'm going to rotate it back one and a half. That's my center point. And I'll mark it, a reference mark here, so I know that I'm on center and it doesn't move on me. OK, 
Okay, so one and a half re revolutions is our center point. I'm going to take a sharpie here and mark the shaft and mark the housing of the uh, rack and pinion so that I have a reference to center. Uh, and now I know exactly where my universal joints are for the steering arms on each side. And I'll center this up underneath the frame rails so that they both have the same amount of clearance left to right. Okay, so our center point uh, between the universal joints on the steering shafts, uh, the overall width here between the joints is 24, so our center point will be at 12. So I'm going to mark that at 12, align that with my center on the IFS cross member, and tack in my mounts. The main component obviously is the is the power rack here, uh, which is a little bit bigger than the standard non-power rack and pinion, uh, and has all the power lines, uh, you know, to give you that power assist when you're turning. So P48 is going to be really easy to maneuver in parking lots, and even though rack and pinions are a little bit easier to turn than a regular manual steering box would be, uh, we decided to go with the the power rack uh, just for that extra level of comfort. So. Um, the rack came in pretty decent shape. Uh, I've got one line here that got flattened during shipping. You know, UPS wasn't too kind with it, and it's a awkward shaped piece uh, to fit in a box. So I, I've got to replace that line. They did send two hard lines with it. I'm hoping those uh, that one of those is the replacement line for this. Um, so once I have it mounted up and uh, mounted in the frame then I'll go ahead and replace that line that needs to be replaced. It has two ports here for your uh, power feed from your power steering pump and uh, your return line back to the reservoir on the pump. Uh, the power rack and pinion requires three quarter inch spacers that come with the kit that come in your hardware kit along with the longer uh, bolts that are required to mount it. Uh, the kit also comes with new tie rod ends that thread onto the end of our rack and pinion here uh, onto our steering shafts. So those will get mounted up onto the steering arms uh, once I get the rack in place. Okay guys, so we got the rack and pinion tabs brackets mounted to our cross member, uh, tacked in place, ready for the rack and pinion to be bolted on. Um, and what I've got to do next is notch uh, the bottom section of the frame to give the uh, rack and pinion unit enough room to clear the bottom of the frame. It was something I had on the radar. I thought I might have to do that. And uh, as it turns out, I'm going to have to clearance it because the rack and pinion won't clear the bottom of the frame. So I've got a three and a half inch, I've got a few of these, three and a half inch hole saws I'm gonna take. Uh, and what my plan is, I'm gonna use uh, a small piece of tubing as a drill guide I'll cut two of those, mount them on either side of the frame parallel with the cross member because our frame rails taper in so you can't, if I make it parallel with the frame rail or perpendicular to the frame rail then they won't be straight with each other and that won't work. So <clears throat> I'm going to make two reference marks um, measured off of the IFS cross member forward onto the center line of our rack and pinion, transfer that up to the frame rail uh, weld my drill guide, tack it to the bottom of the frame rail on, on that parallel line, and then I'll use my hole saw with a bit that fits into my uh, drill guide and bore a hole from the outside of the frame about halfway through, and then bore from the inside of the frame all the way through, and that'll notch the frame rail. And I'll do that on both sides, and then I'll have a nice three and a half inch hole. Uh, It'll be a half moon actually, uh, about halfway up the frame rail uh, for clearance for the rack and pinion. Then I can finish installing the rack and pinion, um, get a piece of three and a half inch pipe, schedule 40, similar to probably three inch schedule 40, similar to what I did with the uh, exhaust cutouts, same thing, and fit that into the, uh, into the frame, 
tack it in place, good to go. And then when I yank the motor out, fully weld that as well as you know all the other stuff I've got to weld. It's starting the list is starting to stack up on me here. So I uh, we'll we'll get that done tomorrow. So I'm gonna have to make this video a two part two part video. So the second part will be notching the frame rail and mounting the rack and pinion and mounting the steering arms on the outer knuckles so I can align everything correctly. Uh, one of the parts I got in this week so far is our uh, studs for our front rotors. So I got some Dorman, Dorman studs, 12 millimeter, 1.5 thread to match the uh, match the rear axle thread, which on the S10 axles metric. So we'll have the same size stud and lug nut all the way around on our axles as well as on our uh, spacers, so everything matches. So if the uh, if the owner of the truck wants to go with a different set of wheels, he doesn't like the the deeply offset Camaro wheels that we're using, he can uh, remove the wheels, remove the spacer, and bolt on a set of rally wheels or uh, you know whatever uh, Chevy five on four point seven five wheel he chooses. So what we've got to do with these then is uh, get our rotors off the front and take them to our machine shop guy and have him uh, set them up on the mill on a drilling fixture for uh, drilling uh, wheel studs, wheel, wheel pattern, and uh, punch those holes out for us. They're already on the right center line. Um, they're just not the right diameter for these uh, pressing studs, so they've got to be opened up a little bit. And I don't want to open them up on my drill press because it's not real accurate and I might get one of the holes off, uh, which may work for now, but when you go to bolt on a, a proper set of wheels, uh, it could throw off the bolt pattern. So I'd rather take those into the machine shop and get those done. So that's it for part one of the rack and pinion fitment, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the content, please click like and subscribe. 